Well, here we are in the land of the Loch of Monster. If you just saw it, it just uh, just went over. Just uh, oh, I can't see it now. You have a look around. I oh, just over there. Um, that's uh, Stroma. You can see it. I'm just trying to do a close up of it. There it is. Now I'm sure I saw the monster taking off from Stroma. You see, it's, uh, it's quite deserted. I believe it was deserted back in the 1960s. Um, now it's just got uh, sheep on there uh, these days, I believe. Uh, but uh, looks looks beautiful. Um, if we just pan around a little bit from there, you can see we move across towards the Orkneys, and maybe I have a little look there. We have well, it looks like maybe an oil tanker or a, certainly a small ferry. That's lovely. Um, not sure where the monster went. You can see Orkney's still there in the background. I'm just going to pan around and see if I can see him anywhere. Uh, it's not gone down into the bushes. Um, no, I'm just panning around to Dunnit Head. Is he, is he there? What was that? Did you see that? Oh no, that's just a ship. Well, there, I can't see him anywhere, but uh, we'll come back to you as soon as, as soon as I see anything more. Well, welcome back. Uh, you find us today on a, a hill fort, an ancient hill fort. Uh, this is very close to uh, to in East Bay. Uh, look behind us, you can see that uh, familiar little stack there. But the fort itself is just just behind the camera, fairly sort of flattish land. Uh, to my left uh, is Stroma. Uh, behind me, you can see the Orkneys. Uh, across and to the to the left of the camera is Dunnit Head. Right. Well, remember we left the story with uh, Jimmy, who'd lost his body. I'm not playing games, Abby. I can't believe it. My body's gone. I have no legs or arms or belly, but I can see and I can feel my head. Maybe my head is still on. Can you see my head, Abby? Abby! What? No, I can't see you or me or anything apart from the inside of the treehouse. Ow! Get off me, Abby, said Jimmy, swinging his invisible arm around to protect himself. It wasn't me. It must be Greg. No, I haven't moved. I'm in the corner by the lamp. But look on the wall, look, we still cast a shadow. This is really weird, but it's really cool too. Yes, look at this, said Jimmy, picking up the sardine tin. I wonder if I can get a sardine in my mouth. He fumbled around with the ring pull. The tin jiggled around in the air and the lid magically pulled back, revealing the tiny little fish. Hey, get off, Abby, get off, hey, get off. I'm going to have the first one, get off. The tin twirled around, upside down, and all the fish disappeared. The tin flew across the floor, towards Greg in the corner. Jimmy, watch out, I'm here, I'm here. I didn't do it, it was Abby. I didn't do anything. I sat here by the doorway, Jimmy. I can't see my legs outside either. She dangled her legs through the door, but they were still invisible. It must be the baby monster is here, quick. Yes, and it likes fish. <laughs> and bags of pasta, said Jimmy, as the bag of pasta disappeared. What are we going to do? I don't want to be invisible. It's scary, said Abby. I saw a horrible film once, and an invisible person. It was all about them, and it was disgusting. People will bump into me. I won't be able to ride Binny. She'll be too scared. Abby began to cry. It'll be OK, Abby, said Jimmy. It's really cool, actually. I'll be able to creep up on that boy sheep. He always tries to butt me. Then I'll jump on him. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'll be able to catch any chicken I want, said Greg. We'll be able to scare Mum and Dad and keep turning the television on and off. <laughs> and school! School will be brilliant. I can't wait for school, said Greg. Suddenly, there was a thud on the side of the treehouse, above the lamp. Then the lamp smashed. Oh, watch out! There were thuds and smashes on the wall. Hey, what's going on? The treehouse began to crack and splinter under the, the attack. Quick, it's the monster. He's trying to get out. Quick, we must keep it safe. Abby, blow the doorway. Quick. I can't see it. I can't see it. 
Abby flapped her arms round and round to try and stop it and grasp in the thin air. The invisible monster suddenly hit Jimmy, full in the stomach. Ow! Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Then a very strange thing happened. As Jimmy gasped for breath, his head suddenly appeared. Oh. And then one of his arms too. Jimmy, we can see your head! Hey, quick! Quick! Quick, Abby, jump! Jump on the monster quickly! We know it's fine, Jimmy, quick, grab it! They quickly leapt onto where they thought the monster would be and on top of Jimmy. Jimmy, we can see your head! I know! They both jumped and crawled and grappled. I've got him! I've got him, I think, yes, yes! You two can let go now, said Greg. Let go! How do you know it's a he? said Abby. I'm just guessing, Abby. I think it's a he. Maybe it's a she. I don't know. Why didn't we all reappear, though? said Abby. Oh, I still can't see me. Well, why is it my head and arm that just appeared? No, <laughs> they're not the bits I would have chosen. <laughs> Oh, yuck! <laughs> That's not funny, said Jimmy. I can't go anywhere now. Everyone will see me. Now they'll be really scared with just my arm and my head. Jimmy's lip began to quiver. The tears began to form in his big green eyes. Yes, but now we can tickle you, said Greg, grabbing him and tickling him. wriggled and giggled and burst into laughter. In fact, he laughed so much he had to stop to use his inhaler. As he drew in a huge breath and a hail from his blue puffer, the rest of his body began to form too, bit by bit, until it was complete, apart from his left foot, which stubbornly refused to appear. You're back, Jimmy. You're back. Give me an inhaler, quick, said Greg. A few minutes later, every part of Greg was visible too. Abby didn't really like the inhaler, but she tried, breathing and puffing in equal measures, and finally, looking very pale and exhausted, reappeared too. The good thing I get asthma, said Jimmy, but how are we going to get the monster to breathe the inhaler? I don't know, Jimmy, but it's his magic. Maybe he can work it out himself. The monster seemed to sigh in Greg's arms. It had stopped struggling and felt safe and content with Greg felt very tired, but slowly it drifted off into a deep, peaceful sleep. Come on, we'd better get, we'd better get off, come on, we've got to feed the animals, come on. It'll be dark soon, the fox will get the ducks, come on. Well, what about my foot? said Jimmy. That's not come back. Oh. Yes, I can see that. You'll have to wear long trousers or something. <laughs> it's not fair. Why does it always happen to me? said Jimmy, feeling a gap in his mouth where his front teeth had recently fell out. After quickly feeding all the animals, the children bundled in through the front door and Dolly greeted them, excitedly jumping and licking whoever she could. Greg quickly slipped into his bedroom, puts the monster under his covers and locked his door. He paused for a moment. He wondered whether the monster would eat his gerbils or not, but he didn't think so. Greg! shouted their mum from the kitchen. Coming! Can you just watch the dinner a minute? Me and Dad have got to help the farmer. He delivered some bales of hay. We need to go and put them away. Okay, okay, Mum. Greg looked at the large pan of meat and vegetables on the cooker. They were covered in a sickly brown sauce. Greg wasn't sure about it, but he dabbed away at it anyway, just to make sure it didn't burn began to bubble into life. Oh no, stew again, said Jimmy. Oh, I hate stew, he said again, trying to take off his invisible shoe. Oh, I hate it. Yeah, so do I, said Abby. I like, I like it a little bit, said Greg. But he likes it a lot. <laughs> Look at him. There, dancing on top of the cooker, Splashing in and out of the stew was the little monster.